What up everyone? Back for another video. Our monthly review. So we're gonna review some boxes and see what's in them. Uh, I was waiting on to do this video because the Zobi box was coming. Then I took a look at it, look in it, and realized it was the August box. And also I tried to look up information on it and there wasn't any out there because I got the box too soon. So I waited to do this video for this box to come and I'm not gonna review it anyway because there's no info on it. So Apologies, but we have four boxes here. So let's talk about that and for anyone tuning into this channel for the first time Hi, welcome what this video is about I'm going to review the top monthly subscription boxes and show you what's in them to help you find the best box for you So if you're interested, please continue other than that. Let's get right into it. First of them is geek fuel technically not a box more of a bag, but Let's see what's in it. First off, we got a shirt. I also moved closer to the camera because I was having trouble focusing on a lot of things, so just moved a little closer. Look at that. Much better focus. Now, this is from Stranger Things. We're going to be seeing a lot of Stranger Things thing, Stranger Things things showing up in boxes because it's just a very popular thing right now. Anything on Netflix, people just lose their shit over, and they just came out with a new season, so we're going to be seeing a lot of this. Exhibit A. So, this shirt, it gets the standard 12 to $15 value, but as far as the score on it, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. You know, I like it, and this style has been done a million times where they take something modern and put it in that classic, like, NES style. It's been done a million times, but I never get sick of it, honestly. I still think it's cool. Maybe it's just my generation. We were the Nintendo generation. I always like it, and I think it's really creative. So, Well, I shouldn't say creative. It just looks cool. So I don't mind that at all. And the quality on Loot Crate shirts is decent. Not the best, but, you know, good enough. So I'm going to give it a 7 to 10. Or sorry, not Loot Crate. Geek Fuel. I'm so sorry. Geek Fuel shirts are really good quality. Not Loot Crate. I got to stop drinking. My apologies. Next, we got a pin. And this is a Mondo pin. This one's from Spider-Man. Stuck in the wrong direction. There we go. Mm -mm. Now, value-wise on this, it's going to go for about somewhere between 8 and 15. Uh, they don't say specifically which pin you get each month. They say a Mondo pin, so it can be one of various ones. So I'm kind of trying to range all the different ones you could have gotten there. So that's why it's a bigger range. But no reason other than that. But the pin quality is always really nice. And Mondo is a very popular company. Their stuff goes for decent values. So... That brings our value, gotta look at my note sheet, on the low end of $20, on the high end of $30. And this is just under a $30 box, so value-wise, not great. This company hasn't been good for a while, and I said that I would stick with this company until the bitter end, cause, just because I've been there since the beginning, but now I'm kind of second-guessing that, considering how broke I am lately. So I'm considering getting rid of this one to just save some money, because it's just... I don't know, it's getting kind of ridiculous at this point. It's just definitely not worth it. And I don't think they're ever going to pick back up, so... I've been considering it. We'll see. But as far as the score on this, I'm only going to give it like a 3 out of 10. Because even on the high end, you're barely getting what you paid for. On the low end, a little bit less than you paid for. Which is just not acceptable in a mystery box. If there were things you were just buying, sure, pay the exact price. No big deal. But when it's a mystery, you don't know what you're getting, so you need more than you're paying for. Because if you don't like something, you need to either be able to resell it or trade it for something of equal value. So that's where that comes from. So not a high score on that, and really not much else to say about it. They always give a $5 coupon in all their bags, but again, theoretical value isn't actually worth anything unless you shop at their specific store. So 3 out of 10, Geek Fuel. My mouth is already getting in incredibly dry. Mmm, alcohol helps with the dry mouth, but doesn't help with the reviewing, because it makes you stupid. Alright, next, Loot Crate. So I'm glad to see them back in action, kinda. We're owed like almost a year of crates, but they've been coming monthly again. I've lost track of what month it is, because you'd think they'd be in chronological order from where we left off, but no. They're just kind of randomly picking and choosing from the last year of boxes we miss, and the ones we're supposed to be getting currently, they just aren't even showing up. So, whatever, I'm glad it's here, so not going to complain too much. First off, the shirt. Oh, damn it. Sorry. I always forget to turn my screensaver off when I do this, and it comes on randomly. 
I'm so bad at making videos. Who's watching this shit? Anyway, we got a Batman and Robin shirt. Uh, pretty classic. This is a design that's been done a million and one times. Still cool, though. It's one of those things that really never gets old. Uh, it's always cool to see t-shirts in the classic uh, DC Marvel style, so they're always going to be popular, but not a lot of creativity to it. And as far as the quality on the shirt, not the best. Uh, Loot Crate shirts are like in the so-so category where it's like acceptable, but not great. So as far as the score on that, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 because it's, it's, it's decent. I'd like to wear it if it fits well, but it most likely doesn't. And then I'll get the standard $12 to $15 value. Next, we got a figure. Now, I would say a figure from NECA, but NECA never puts their name on any of these figures. For those of you who don't know, excuse the sound. For those of you who don't know, NECA owns Loot Crate. Used to be an independent company, NECA bought them out and now produces these items. So these figures are technically NECA figures. They don't put their name on it, however, because these are very low quality figures and I don't think they want the good name of NECA to be on these ass quality figures. Or it's also possible that they just haven't sold off the things from when they bought out Loot Crate. Either way, here's a Gremlins figure. And you know, it's not terrible. They did a, a decent job on it. It's not like mind blowing by any means, but you know, it's pretty good. They did a good job. I, I like that. And it's way better than some of the past figures we got. I'm always going to refer to that G.I. Joe figure we got that was so fucking awkward looking. At least this is proportionally accurate. At least it looks like what it's supposed to look like. So, decent quality, but, you know. Figure-wise, this is only going for like 10 to $12. And I've been meaning to try out Loot Crate DX, which is the upgraded version of this box for a while. But I saw the... Yeah, your fly? Shoot. I saw the figure they got in Loot Crate DX. Uh, same theme, but it was Gizmo. But it looks just fucking terrible. I'll, I'll show a picture of it right now. For some reason, they didn't put any eyelids on Gizmo. And <laughs> he looks so weird. Like, why didn't you put eyelids on this figure? Other than that, it would have been really cool. Uh, same quality as this, other than they just forgot to put eyelids on it. I only bring that up because that figure goes for a decent amount, even though it looks like shit. And this one... It really doesn't go for much at all. I'm kind of surprised it doesn't go for at least a little bit more. Maybe NECA should put their name on it because having the NECA name, I feel like would just give it more value, but I understand why they don't. So 10 to 12 on that. Next, we got a magnet set. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 8-bit. So we got kind of a, I'm guessing an 80s theme here. I'm guessing that's what it is because this is 80s, Gremlins 80s. Um, Stranger Things takes place in the 80s and they put it in an 80s uh, uh, Nintendo theme. So sure. Something like that. These are magnets. Uh, that's fine. Cool. Can I love some magnets? I have shit all over my fridge. I'll put them on there. I actually might keep this one in the carded box. I think it looks better like that personally than some separate magnets. But that's just me. That's what I'll do. And those go for five to ten dollars. That's the range on that. Lastly, we got a pin, and we got a Joker pin. Which is weird. This is the classic Loot Crate. Well, I guess it makes sense now that I think of it. This is the classic style of Loot Crate pin. They were on a circle. They were always on a circle and a pin that was always like pretty low in quality. And I'm realizing we're getting old crates, so that's why it's the older style. That's the old style. They've recently updated to more square backings with much more detailed pins, which I appreciate. I'm hoping that's in the future as well, but who knows? Maybe they're switching back and forth. But this is pretty much a standard pin, so that only goes for about six to eight bucks. Like I said, their pins are a little bit lower in quality, so that's why it's in that like six to eight dollar range. So, value wise, on the low end, 33, on the high end, 45. Something to note, this box recently went up in price. Now, I don't know for sure if Loot Crate is charging more or if it's just my state tax or something like that got adjusted, but it went from like a $32 box to a $35 box. Let me know in the comments if the same thing happened to you. Check your account and see if it went up because it, everything looked the same to me. So if no one else had that same problem, it, it might be something with my state tax or something like that, but I'm just kind of curious. So let me know in the comments. But having that be a $35 box, value-wise, this isn't great. On the low end, you're actually getting less than you pay for. On the high end, only about 10% or uh, $10, 30% more than what you paid for, which, you know, isn't bad. Uh, getting more than you paid for is always a good thing value-wise. And 30%, like, that's decent. That's not horrible. But the things in here weren't great quality. The shirt design was cool, not great quality. Uh, it's cool to have the figure, not great quality. Magnets were fine. Yeah, whatever. And then the pin, same thing. It was cool to have, 
low quality. So that being said, I'm gonna give it a 5.5 out of 10. It's just barely worth it. It's still cool stuff and a lot of it's exclusive. And I, I would say you get a little bit more than you paid for, but really not much. So it's right around that middle range, which is pretty common for Loot Crate. They're usually always around that like five to six out of 10 range. That's pretty standard. So there you go, Loot Crate. Next, the BAM box, but the BAM comic box. So this is a little bit of an interesting situation. Uh, I thought this was the BAM box had a BAM comic box, which they did monthly. And that was something that was a new box, but it started out really crappy because it was re really low in quality. They used CBCS grading instead of CGC grading. They didn't get exclusive covers. A whole lot of problems with it. You can go back and watch that video if you like, and it'll explain it all. Anyway, I gave them a lot of advice like, hey, switch to CGC, get some exclusive covers, get better signatures, all these things, and they followed it to the T, making this such a better box, a subscription box, and then for some reason, they cancel it. I thought this box was going to be the monthly comic box, but apparently it's not. At the same time they canceled the monthly box, they went to this like standalone graded comic box, and it was so weird and confusing, and they didn't really say, hey, we're switching over. And the funny thing is, it got more and more expensive, so I thought this was the monthly box, and it wasn't. I am a fan of this artist, David Nakayama, and I really wanted a graded cover by this artist, so I got this box and then realized this isn't the monthly subscription box because all it came with was the comic. That's it. Nothing else. The other box had a graded comic, a standard version of the comic, a mount, and a special edition coin, which I really liked and thought was really cool, and that's what motivated me to buy this box. Had I known that none of that other stuff was going to appear, I don't think I would have bought it. So I feel a little bit tricked in that sense and very disappointed because not only do I only get the comic, it is probably of my least favorite Marvel character. I've never liked She-Hulk. Nothing against women, by the way. I've just always thought this was a joke character. Before the Avengers movies came out, I wasn't even a fan of Hulk, honestly. So She-Hulk was just a goofy character I always thought was dumb. And I just never appreciated it. So I was super bummed to see like one of my least favorite characters. And it could have been literally any other female character. And I probably would have been psyched. I like most of the Marvel female characters, except She-Hulk. I just, I've just always felt like it was a joke. Like in He-Man, when they added She-Ra and everyone called her She-Man. It was just kind of a joke character that was like kind of towards the end of the series. I felt that way about She-Hulk. It was just a weird thing where it took this really like masculine character and then made it into a woman. It was just, I don't know, it's weird. So <laughs> not gonna talk more shit on She-Hulk. Anyway, just bummed to see that character. And on top of that, this is technically an exclusive cover, but not exclusive art. And what I mean by that, they're already a cover of this already exists exactly like this, except the background is purple. All that Bambox did was change the background color. That's it. Change it from purple to green. Made it exclusive. So that I was also kind of bummed about too. Now the positive things. It's signed by David Nakayama. So that's a positive thing. All the other ones I've seen of this that are graded are definitely not signed by him, but apparently that didn't make much of a difference. So let's talk about some value. This box, when it was monthly subscription, started out at $90. Then it went up to $100. Then it went up to $115. And this one set the high limit at $130. After taxes and shipping, it comes out to about $150, which is a significant jump from the last one, especially considering it doesn't have any of the extras this one does. Now, as far as this comic selling, it's selling kinda. Most of the listings aren't selling that are at that price, 150. A few of them have sold around that price, $150. So best case scenario, you're getting what you paid for. But there's a lot of listings out there that aren't selling because this isn't really a popular cover. I don't think this character is popular and considering it's not original art, that's not popular either. Even the signature added to it is really not making it that much more valuable. And some of the other ones that were exclusive are going for double and triple the amount. So that was also disappointing. So it's weird to have this in my monthly subscription review because I was assuming it was monthly box, but it's kind of not. And it, considering we only got one item, it's not even really a mystery box at that point. You're, I kind of just bought this comic. So, but either way, here it is. So as far as the score on it, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10 because it's, you know, it's still cool. I like that artist. I like that his signature's on there. I like that it's graded. I like that it's a 9.8 
For those of you who don't get comments graded, it's really hard to get that score. So I, I do like those things, but so disappointed on so many ends of it. But, you know, you technically got what you paid for, and you pretty much knew what you were getting. You just didn't know the character, so there wasn't a ton of mystery there. So I, I think it's fair to give it 5 out of 10. I'm not really disappointed, but I'm not really excited either. Got what you paid for, so... Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, honestly, I felt weird putting this in the monthly review, but I had to put it somewhere, and I did think it was a monthly box. And again, bam, canceling more things. Stop fucking canceling things. Bring back the cartoon box. Stop canceling shit you just started. Stick with it. Come on, do it. All right. Enough complaining. Last box. Come on now. Pusheen box. And this is the Summer Crate? Sure. Uh, we just got one on the last monthly review, but that one was delayed, and I think this one was on time. Whatever. It's here. So we're going for June on that one. No, July. Hm. Yeah. All right. Got a lot of stuff in here, so let's talk about this shit. Got a figure. Pusheen as a cappuccino, and it was called, no, a macchiato. It was called a meow chiato. So clever, this box. So as far as this uh, value on that, it's actually going for 20 to 25 dollars. Figures in this box are always getting decent value. I've said it once, I've said it a million times. Pushing is just a very popular character. It's like Hello Kitty, very similar in style, and everything that cat's face appears on just makes it more valuable. I'm always surprised on the value of pretty much all the things in the box, but can't argue with the facts. 20 to 25, Pushing is a macchiato. All right. Probably should have started with this. The shirt. No surprise. It smells weird. It smells like fish. What a weird smell to have on a shirt when you just got it. So, Cat Pusheen Eno. <laughs> Not the most clever title. They could probably could have worked on that one a little bit. But, you know, it's very straightforward. Obviously, you're getting this box. You know you're getting Pusheen and stuff. I actually like the shirts. The shirts are decent quality. And I've said before, they always add a little extra. A lot of times we've gotten jackets and sweaters, which are like upgraded items according to clothing companies. And the least we'll get is a t-shirt, but they always do a little more. Sometimes it's a ringer, sometimes it's this style, which has a specific name, which is um, Raglan, Raglan style t-shirt. So they always put a little extra on, this, on the t-shirt, not to just make it an average t-shirt. And anyone who's got t-shirts printed knows, styles like this, they cost extra. It's very expensive to do it that way. So I like that they always put a little bit extra on the shirt to just know they're not giving you some cheap piece of crap. They're trying it the best they can to make it nice. And you know, it's a nice color. It's not crazy bright. So I like it. I think I actually might wear that. Um, so it'll get the standard $12 to $15 value. But as far as the score on that, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. You know, the design on it's not like mind-blowing or anything. There's not a ton of creativity into it. But you know, it's pretty straightforward. And I like the colors. They're subtle. They're matching. Uh, it's it's very well done. And it's pretty fitted as well. Like, I, I'll actually actually wear that shirt so I think they did a decent job next we got a plush figure and this is a affogato pushing I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right which if I'm uh, correct that's an Italian dessert the only reason I know that is because I re recently went to Epcot uh, in the recent past and tried to get this dessert but they were sold out so <laughs> that's the only reason I know what that is but either way pushing is an Italian I assume possibly French uh, dessert so that's him as a plush, and that's going for 20 to 25. Next, we got a little ice pack, which I think is great because I hurt my knee recently and realized I didn't have an ice pack. It's one of those things like when you live at home as a kid, you, your parents always have those kinds of things around. And then you like, become an adult and buy your own house, and you realize like the house doesn't come with that stuff. You got to go out of your way to buy ice packs for yourself. And I just never have, so I didn't have one. So, long story short, here's one now. Sick. All right, that is going for about $15 to $16. Next, we got a little collapsible snack pack. So the bottom of it's rubber and it kind of pushes out a little bit so it makes it a little bigger so you can put more in there. And then it collapses if you want to put something thinner like some sushi in there. So got a little pushing on the front. That's what he looks like. Got a little phrase. That's going for about $15 to $17. Next, 
a, we got a picnic blanket. This is very, very thin. It's like more of a plasticky vinyl feel. It's not soft at all. Picnic blanket meant to be sat on, not really meant to be comfortable or anything like that. And it rolls up nicely like that. That's going for about 15 to 20. And might I add, this is the only item of everything I saw here that hasn't sold online. So apparently this isn't too popular because it hasn't sold. Literally everything else has. All right, then we got a little bottle opener. You know I'll use this. You know how much I drink. I'm a crazy alcoholic, so I'll use that probably in the next 15 minutes. Cool, I'll add that to my bottle opener collection, which I have in the house. You'll see it on the next house tour. That's going for about 12 to 15. Last, we got a tote bag. I don't know why I'm folding it. It's, it's pretty much the same pattern all across. Pusheen as a croissant and a madeleine and a, what is that, a cupcake? Something like that. Now I'm thinking this box is more French. Now I'm thinking that was a French dessert. But either way, decent sized tote and that's going for about 26 to $30. So pretty high in value on that and selling for that. So total value on the low end, 135, on the high end, 162. This comes out to about a $55 box, somewhere between 50 and 60, but depending on shipping and your state tax. For me, I think it's right around 55. So on the low end, more than double your value, way more. On the high end, pretty much triple your value, which is significant. And as I stated, everything on here, these prices I'm giving, it's not just general asking prices, these are selling prices, meaning people pay this and honestly a lot more than a lot of these prices. I'm just kind of trying to average it out. So value wise, absolutely fantastic. Last time we saw this box, one of my only 10 out of 10s. This one's not a 10 out of 10, I'm giving it a nine out of 10, which is very high. I very rarely ever give that. But still, that's that's pretty fantastic. Um, the last box was like quadruple your value, that's why it got 10, but this one's pretty close to triple, which is amazing. And everything in here is 100% authentic. And again, it's very straightforward. Obviously, you'd like to have to like Pusheen to get this box because he's all over this shit. So no surprise there. And I want to try more Culture Fly boxes, but honestly, in the past, all their other boxes, they didn't suck or anything, but they just were barely worth it. And at 60 bucks, uh, 50 to 60 bucks uh, every few months is a lot. Some of these boxes are monthly, and that's a that's a lot to spend. So I, I've tried them out and canceled them, but I kind of want to go back and see more because this one's been phenomenal. This has been one of the best boxes I've ever reviewed. So that's pretty incredible. So 9 out of 10 on that. So if you are a fan of Pusheen, please go check this box out. It is absolutely worth every penny. It's pretty fantastic. The rest are just kind of there, so whatever. And you'll notice we didn't see the BAM box this month, which because I don't know where they are. I'm, I think it's just a little bit late, so I, it might be a month behind, but we'll see you on the next month with this Zobi box, which is pretty good, by the way. Other than that, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening to me chatter for almost a half an hour. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you want to talk about. As always, if you have any questions at all about things in the box, monthly subscription boxes, what to subscribe to, or collectibles in general. I'm kind of a pro at this stuff, and I know all about these investments, so if you have any investments, uh, investment questions or want some advice, please let me know. I'm here to help and I'm here to talk to the community. Thank you again to all the people that do weigh in and do give your comments. I always appreciate it. I love talking to you in the comments and I love getting a little conversation going. So thank you so much for that. Other than that, I'll see you on the next video. Don't know what it is yet. I have a lot of uh, ideas lined up because I only did uh, monthly videos for a while. So you should see some interesting stuff coming up in the future. And yeah, that's about all there is about that. Uh, so I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for supporting. Love you all. Peace.